A very good afternoon to you and I hope your Thursday has gone well. We continue our Thursday series here at St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford thinking about phrases that may have just struck early listeners in a particular way. Today in fact we are just looking at a single word and it's a word that Paul uses in his letters and of course it's a word in fact that comes up quite often in the scriptures and we're going today to Ephesians chapter 3 and the word is power. Paul writes this. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It is a wonderful prayer, and many hymns and many words have been written and spoken about the greatness of the love of God in Christ, that we may grasp how wide and long and high and deep it is. But interestingly, Paul says that we need, we need power to grasp it. We can't do it by ourselves. And that repetition of the word power, first, secondly, to know the greatness of the love of Christ, and then firstly, that power through his spirit in our inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. The early listeners and perhaps we may be thinking, why do we need power? Why can we not just accept it, receive it in ourselves? Four quick thoughts, if I may. First of all, power is needed if there are obstacles in the way, if there are things that need to be cleared through. And maybe there are obstacles in our lives that stop us receiving the love of Christ as we would. Paul uses the word grasping the, uh, uh, the width and the length and the height and the depth of the love of Christ. Maybe sometimes I am grasping something else and my fingers are wrapped tight around that something else may not always be helpful and it may need power to unclench my hand from that. And so we can pray for power there. Maybe there's other things in my life which just stops me receiving this love or stops me sensing that Christ can dwell in my heart through faith and so power is needed. Secondly this speaks of comfort because I will often sense I can't do this in my own strength and so we can pray for the power of God to help us unclench our hands if need be to take our eyes from being distracted elsewhere and power that we can receive that all he wishes to give us. It's not all up to us and that can be a great comfort. As one writer said, we're not only saved by grace, justified by grace, we are sanctified by grace as well. God graciously working in us that we can receive all he wishes to give us. So the second thing, it can be a comfort and encouragement to us. We don't have to rely on ourselves. But the flip side of that, the third thing, is that it's then a little bit of a challenge because may, we may think, I don't need any help to receive the love of God. I can do all this myself. And that can always be a little bit of a danger. And the psalmist wrote, unless the Lord builds the house, then we workers, we labour in vain. And if I can think I can do all this Christian life by myself, then it's possibly not going to be entirely the Christian life I'll be doing because it's from my strength not from God's strength and if in all our in our work seeking to build the kingdom of God if we think we can do it by ourselves then maybe it won't be his kingdom we are finally building so there's a bit of a challenge here it's a humbling moment Paul is saying to the Ephesians you need external power to know that Christ dwells in your heart by faith you need external power to sense the wonderful love of God in Christ for you. 
So those three things, we need power because it clears away the obstacles. Secondly, the reminder that the, the power of God is at hand is a great comfort. And thirdly, it's a bit of a challenge as well. We can't do this by ourselves. Let's not pretend that we can. But fourthly, if I may, just a word about the word power, because power can have unfortunate inferences, unfortunate echoes. And perhaps we've been in situations where we have seen power abused. Maybe we ourselves have sometimes abused the power that we have. And even, dare I say it, in church circles, power can be abused. And just a reminder that the power of the kingdom of God comes in gentleness and patience. Jesus says, blessed are the meek, which means those who can use their strength well and gently. Elijah had to learn that he would not hear God in the earthquake, wind and fire, but in the still small voice of calm. So whenever we think of power, perhaps we can think of the baby at Bethlehem and not the power expressed by Herod the king. The power of God works gently, powerfully, relentlessly, lovingly, but it doesn't need to be loud and macho and pushing people down. So four brief thoughts about this word, that power is needed to get rid of the obstacles, the need of God's power is a comfort, it can be a challenge because we do need it, and also how do we feel about the word power? How do we exercise it? How have we seen it exercised well? So for those early listeners, they would have perhaps noted Paul's inclusion of the word power. They may initially have not thought it necessary, but then as they lived their lives, as we lived our lives, we may continue to know that we need the power of God. In this Pentecost tide, may we remember that Jesus said, when the Spirit comes upon you, he will bring power. And the power the Spirit brings is for us to know the love of God. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It's not a bad thing to pray for each morning that we may be given this power to know the love of God. Thank you so much for listening this evening. Have a very good rest of your day.